Well, Dr. O'Farrell joins me live now to expand on that statement. Dr. O'Farrell, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, the comments have been criticised by a number of prominent voices. Do you accept that criticism? Yes, I do. I'd, I'd like to contest. First of all, it's lovely to think that I am a doctor, but I'm not actually. Uh, but by the by, I, I think that the criticism is justified in the terms of the context. What I would like to make the point is this, an hour and a half s session today, and that was 40 seconds while I was trying to explain to the committee and the wider audience exactly what Middlesex do and what they've been doing to try and develop and engage with all, uh, with all parts of the community. And we spent an enormous amount of time doing that. And because that point, and it was part of my evidence, but it was a very tiny part, and it was taken out of context in relation to everything else that has been said and that which we do at Middlesex, both on and off the field. I mean, just to continue if I might, we have about 3,000 volunteers who work vigorously to try and ensure that the 50 to 60 percent of the diverse community that we service in terms of cricket is looked after in a very good way and we're trying to move on and on to do that. Sometimes it's slow, and the point I was trying to make, that some parts of the community find it more comfortable to be in other sports than ours. And that's our fault. That's no one else's fault. We have got to take responsibility to do that. That's the point I was trying to make. And that came across quite strongly in the evidence. But unfortunately, this piece was uh, quoted, and therefore I take full responsibility for that. Not, I have obviously not emphasised it or made it clear enough. Yeah, Mr. O'Farrell, um, you say it's taken out of context, but we've run it, and um, these are old tropes, the stereotypical tropes that are often tr trotted out, and you use them. So, um, is it something now that you come on record it's here my, it's and my, It's my fault. Yes, I do. I regret saying it in that way. I believe that I should have put it much closer in context and made people aware of everything that we're doing because that, what we're doing in the game, from here and all around Middlesex, is really reflected in the thousands of young people that play the game of all generations, both men and women, uh, and we have, we have achieved quite a lot in doing that. And I think that, for me, I take full responsibility for those words that I used in that context that does not reflect what Middlesex does, neither does it reflect what Middlesex, both the players and the staff and the board and our members feel. So that is entirely my responsibility for that particular part of the hour and a half there. I should have been a little more, much more careful in what I said. Cricket's taken a real kicking of late. Um, can you see how you've added to that? I suspect I can, I can certainly see how I've added to that. I'd also like to think that people look at it in a rather broader way and think about the other things that cricket does for a wider community. We are finding that many people are supporting us as we try and get cricket to those people, particularly in London, who don't have the opportunity to play. So I can, any time that things are said in a way that could be improved on, that's a responsibility for those that are involved in the game. We're all volunteers, all of us, and we have to recognise that with that, although we're volunteers, we have to take the responsibility of being chairs or CEOs of organisations. So I recognise that, and I do put that on the record, that I, and my statement makes it clear that I apologise for that and the interpretation, because it's obviously caused offence. I haven't seen all the social media yet. I've just come back from uh, Westminster. But it's very clear to me that I have obviously offended people, and those that know me know that that is not my demeanour. So I personally uh, apologise for that and apologise on behalf of Middlesex Cricket. Now, um, you've said that the Middlesex Academy contains over 60% British-born South Asians and black cricketers. How will you explain to them what you said in front of the committee? I suppose I've got to go back to the data and the Tom Brown research, which uh, I should possibly have said that Cultural, di cultural diversity encompasses all of that, the 57%, so it should encompass all. So in my case, it's a bad choice of language, and for that, again, I apologise. The former FA chair, Greg Clark, made similar comments to Parliament, to the same committee, actually. He resigned. Are you considering your position? 
Not at this particular stage, because I think what we're doing for Middlesex and what we're doing for Middlesex cricket and the game generally uh, is moving it in the right direction. Um, I will always hold my hand up for my mistakes. I think what we've achieved here, and I'm speaking for Middlesex at the moment, uh, says that we're on the right path. If the board decide that they think that I should step down, I will do that. Uh, I've got one more year to go. If the members feel strongly enough, I'm sure they'll tell me. Uh, if you've researched my background, you know I'm very happy. I've been very involved in most things of a very contentious nature, so I'm always very willing to expect to respect the views of those who wish to make a public statement about this. Well, Mr. Michael Farrell, thank you very much for coming on and fronting up. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time.